Welcome everyone, my name is Nuno Pereira from NunoSolutions.com. Today, this is uh, part two of the video where I'm just going to show you how to export a report to a file, um, to PDF, Excel, CSV, etc. So the first thing you're going to need, you're going to need Visual Studio 2010 Professional and start off by creating a brand new project. And I'm going to show you how to create, how to do this from a Windows Forms application. So I'm just going to rename this real quick to Nuno Solutions, click OK. Got a form, let's add a button to the form. And I'll name that export to export Excel. Double click that so I could tie into the button click event. Not worried about naming conventions right now. So what you're gonna need to do is go to my website and download the report class, which is right here. Just right click it and do save target as. And save it on your desktop or wherever you like. And then for in your Visual Studio project, you're gonna to wanna to right click your project and add an existing item. Which right now is on my desktop. And let's just rename this to get rid of the date there and add it like that, report open that up you can take a look there's there's a class and there's an enum in there that's that's it I'm not going to get into it r yet right now so next thing you got to do is add a either a web reference which you can do by right clicking references add service reference advanced add a web reference and you type in here the URL to the port server execution service uh, I'll show you how to do that real quick localhost report server slash Report execution 2005.asmx. Enter. And you'll see it finds the execution service with all existing web methods, etc. You want to change the name, add a reference. That'll automatically add a system.web.service that, that reference um, and also add the web service reference. Well, create a, automatically create a proxy class for you. Uh, if you want to do that manually, uh, you'll have to use the wisdom tool. And to do that, you'll have to use the Visual Studio 2010 command line utility. Just see if you get out of that. And you're going to want to do WSDL and then the path uh, to, to your web service. There's a couple different switches. By default, this is going to export to C Sharp, which is what we're working with. So we're going to leave it as the default. I believe it's uh, slash o colon vb if you want to do export it as a vb file, vb proxy file. Report server slash report execution 2005.asmx. Hit enter. Boom, it generates it in my C drive. If I go into my C drive, boom, there it is. Let's add that directly to our solution. So right click project, add existing item, go into the wherever you saved it select report execution service and it's in your project um, I just test it make sure it's, it's not yeah when you the reason why this is, is because you just added a service a class that you that references system services and it's not uh, you don't have it uh, referenced yet so right click references to click add reference click the .NET tab wait until it finished loading then sort by component name. I usually click somewhere in the middle and press S, go directly to the S's. And you want to search for system.web services. Here it is. Hit OK, adds it. Squiggly lines are going to disappear. Boom, you're all set. Test the build. Boom, build succeeded. You're, all, you're good. Um, if you use the add web reference method, you add in the report class, you're going to have to add a, a using. Uh, and it's usually going to be whatever your your your, so your uh, whatever your name the namespace of your project is. You just copy it directly. Click, double click properties. Copy it directly from here. And you're going to want to do paste. And then whatever name you gave um, the web service, RS, whatever. I didn't get, I didn't add it that way, so I'm, I don't need this. I'm just explaining it in case you guys did it that way. It won't build. Uh, okay, so. Let's uh, generate the code. Let's write some code to actually export the report. So you're going to have to create an instance of the report. 
the report class. And you're gonna to want to set the server URL to whatever path your services is. In my case, it's localhost report server. Um, to, um, one thing is, I'm doing using localhost. I could have used my my computer name. Cause it's, I'll just do that just so for demo purposes. Um, that's the server name, obviously, even, whether it's remote or not. It's, so the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set the credentials. There's a username and password property. And I created a user specifically for this. You can use your own uh, credential because you know it, automa it automatically has uh, access to report services. I mean, re yeah, re yeah, report services and report manager. Or you can create a user um, for yourself and then in report manager assign, you know, add, give them permissions uh, I believe it needs. It's going to need content manager permissions. If you're wrong, you might want to look that up. I know it works with content manager, but I don't know if that's the minimum permissions that it needs. So, um, oh, one other thing: if you're using a local user, that's all you need is username, and password. If you're doing a domain, you're going to have to set the domain as well. So, I'm not. I'm using a local user. So, all right. So the next thing you're going to want to do is set the folder path. Basically, it's the path to the report within report services. To figure this out, you're gonna wanna open up report manager. Let me open that up. And you do it's server, server name slash reports. And the, the report I'm gonna run is in, the, in this Northwind reports folder. And the report I'm gonna run obviously is Northwind customers. If you look up here at the top, and I believe in 2005 it has a similar, it'll show you the path at the top. That's basically the path to my report in, in the report object. That's what it's looking for. It wants to know what folder slash report name you want to run. So um, you could actually copy this and just paste it directly in here. What, and all you have to do is add a slash in the front of Northwind reports, get rid of that little arrow, and put a slash out right before the report name. Okay. That's pretty much it. Just get, make sure you get rid of this, any spaces or else um, report service might bark. Um, and now you're gonna wanna tell it what format. Uh, I believe I'm gonna, I believe I said I was gonna export the Excel, so let's do that. I, I created an enum to make it really easy for you guys so you don't misspell anything. Just set, pick the format you want, and then to actually export, you just call the export function. Notice there's three overloads here. You could set a path directly in, as a string, you, you know, something like this. Right, or you could just call call it without any overloads, and it's going to prompt you for a um, uh, a file path where you want to save the, the file. So let's just build this to see if it we can run it. And before I click export, I'm just going to pull up my Windows Explorer. I'm going to just get rid of this real quick. We're going to actually export to the to the C, C drive, which is where we are right now. So let's hit the export button. It's gonna prompt you. Make sure you select a C drive. And I'm gonna type in NW to save. And you'll notice that the Excel file appears right away. Open. And let's see what that looks like. This is what the report basically looks like in Excel. If you'll go into Report Manager and run the report, which we kind of did already, it looks exactly the same pretty much. So I'm going to close that and close this this uh, window to stop the project. Let's uh, try to create another button. And this one, double click it so you can hook it into the click event. Just copy the code above that we've already written. And we're going to export to PDF. And this time, instead of having it prompt us, we're gonna save it directly to the root. Um, let's, let's call it northwind2.pdf. Save it. Build. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, if you, there's a trick. If you put at sign at the beginning of a string, you don't have to do a, use a double slash because it's trying to escape the characters. 
or the other alternative is you just type two slashes but I like looking at the paths nice and neat so I just do it that way save run and this the second button should export to PDF nothing here click it uh, hold on what did I what did I do here Let me just look at the export method I might have given you a bad uh, file and if I did if the code might upload the code I'll make it uh, oh I see I see the problem here all right so you you actually want to use the format extension not the format name and when you call the render method here's one thing you're going to want to do uh, the string right so if this is xls then return xl support services expects it that way for some reason else return the format extension and just I'll write that that should that really should do it <laughs> I'll make sure I update the code online to get, get a good a good uh, sample so let's click button two boom there's the PDF that exported it looks good just make sure the make sure the Excel one works again and we are good there we go that concludes my tutorial for now I'm going to um, create another video showing how to do the same thing from a web application um, and um, I have similar objects, similar classes that I created to do the same thing in an ASP.NET web application uh, and that's pretty much it. Thank you, thank you for watching.